Hello there, and welcome to The Mandalorian Season 2 Review. This time, I'm welcomed by... What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Big Daddy Mo. Yeah, uh, that guy, He's he seems to have more of a... Go get ya. Um, <laughs> well, wh- what do you think of The, the Mandalorian Season 2? Because you remember Season 1, right? The, the snooze fest? You know, I saw Season 1 one time. That's probably why I didn't, you know, really watch it. It was okay. But Season 2... Season two was good, minus like maybe okay, minus the second episode for sure. Second, okay, definitely the second episode because mm-hmm. uh the, the the okay season two oh God, was a masterpiece compared to season one. Absolutely. Season one, the review I did, I did actually a year after it came out, and I didn't even need to watch it over again. I could remember everything that happened. Why? Because it was just that slow. They took the safest route they could for that season i'm trying to remember the first season i i, I keep remember um what is it i have spoken i have spoken i, Nick remem- Nolte. I remember that <laughs> yeah I, I did love the fact that they tried to get the most un unused characters from star wars and try to make them a popular character but at the same time mm-hmm. it was just like and, why are you playing it so safe and if, okay and for the season two or maybe it was also season one is it me or this is not really mando's story it seemed like he had something to do but then he goes somewhere and, and they'd be like, OK, I'll do this, but you have to help me. And it's like each, yep. each episode, he's basically in somebody else's story. He's he's doing something else for somebody. And sometimes they don't even need him. It's like he's there to, like, shoot some people. It's like You have three that, or four people with you. Why can't you shoot them yourself? That is the entire series yeah. in a nutshell. Yeah, it is not his story. It has never been his story. Mandalorian. He's he's well, he, he's got a, a bucket on his head. You you can't get much of a you can get emotion from those kind of characters. <laughs> yeah. I mean, heck, the original Star Wars started out with R two D two and C three PO, literally tin mm-hmm. cans. Yep, yep. And we cared about those characters because we saw their personality. Here we have Mando, who's supposed to be like a robotic, a loyal, uh, cultist that you don't get any character development with him. Mm-hmm. That you instantly don't care about him. I cared more for R2-D2 and C-3PO on their first 10 minutes of screen time than I ever did for Mando, which is why it seems like they keep surrounding Mando with characters that actually you actually care for. Yes, because... actually first, have great backstories. First episode, Timothy Oliphant. I'm, I'm, I've been a big fan of Timothy Oliphant since um, 2004 is The Girl Next Door. So to see him in it, and he's like, what, the sheriff of the town, and he's been using... Boba Fett's armor. It's like they okay. They're they're giving a lot of Disney is giving a lot of spinoffs for a lot of characters, Marvel and um, Star Wars. I would like to see more of Timothy Oliphant's character, but the thing is, you can say that about almost every character that Mando uh, Mando has encountered. Um, yeah, yeah, Timothy Oliphant's well, they, character, they have, Bill Burr character. They have more of a story than any other person. That's the thing. They they carry the series because everything Mando helps them with is their story, yep. is what they need done. But honestly, I did love the first episode because when Timothy Oliphant pops up in Boba Fett's armor, you know that's not Boba Fett. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, the way he stands, the way he cocks his head, you know you know that actor. You know you know who's in that suit of armor. Because it's funny because and, when I was watching it, like I didn't have my glasses on, so I could barely see. But then all of a sudden, all I saw was like a little, like a head nod and a smirk. And I was just like, wait a minute, is that Timothy Oliphant? And then he starts talking. I'm like, bruh, give him his show. And it's basically justified in space or whatever. That's basically yeah, what but, a, his, his character's but the, show can be. You could tell who was in Boba Fett's suit of armor immediately. There was so much character put into the emo- to the motions mm-hmm. that you could tell who it was. However, with Mando, you could swap out who's in that suit, and as long as they act just as stiff as uh, Pablo pa- Pedro, Pedro Pascal. Uh, Pascal, yeah. Yeah. Nobody would know the difference. That is true. Nobody would know the difference. Yet, Timothy Oliphant, you have him in Boba Fett's armor, you will tell. You will instantly know that that was him in there, especially if you had just watched a movie with him. He, he's got that same kind of swagger that he brings to every film. Speaking of Pedro Pascal, okay, so he's in the suit the entire time you just hear his voice. But the moment he takes his um, helmet off, it's like, okay, now there's a time for him to like maybe throw in some acting or whatnot. And, ooh, let me turn his... All right, you hear me? Yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> dude, I kept getting, <laughs> I kept getting a notification. But um, <laughs> tell him to shut up in the Discord, bro. 
<laughs> but um, yeah. Okay, so you have the you have the moment where he has to take his mask off for uh the the facial uh, recognition. And what I like about his performance there is because it's like he takes his mask off, his helmet off, and now you know you have people talking to him, the enemy. And he looks so out of his zone, out of his comfort zone. He looks uncomfortable. He, he looks like he's so, like like someone hit him with a rock over his head. And he I, just, I thought that was good. I thought he did good because I mean it's like okay, what do I do here? You know what I'm saying? Like this is this is not this is not me. Like what's going on here? I thought he did a good job right there because he 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 looked like yeah like when Bur- uh, Bill Burr's character was like oh you know you have to talk louder to him something happened to his ear his hearing or whatever. Yes, he looks so confused. So I thought he did good right there, but. Other well, than that, that's he's the just thing. talking I think, under a helmet. I think I think Pedro Pascal is one of those actors who can only act when they're being shown. The problem is when you're wearing like yeah. a, a helmet or a suit of armor or something, you have to actually put more stage acting. You have to be more of a stage actor. It's like voice that was acting. The issue. Yeah, like voice acting. Yeah, you have that was, to put that a was... lot into your voice. But it, with him, it's just like, oh, uh, give me their gun. Uh, take off, take off the uh, you know the suit. It's not yours. This is the way. It's like he's just talking. There's no real yeah, emotion. He, he's like a robot. He needs to be more flamboyant with his emotions. He needs to mm-hmm. move and exaggerate more. That way, it would come across on camera much better. Because because then I could normally I could it's the, the face. Yeah, the face could is what draws people in. But if they don't have the face, they're staring at your entire figure. Mm-hmm. So it's your body that needs to bring them in. Exactly. But still. The first episode was amazing. Fighting the Kray hey, Dragon up, was time out, time fascinating. Out, time out. Are we doing spoilers here? Yeah. Okay, duh. cool. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. We already brought up Timothy Oliphant. We already brought up the Boba Fett armor. I mean, That's everything true. could be considered a spoiler because it's introduced like at 10 minutes in. That is true. Yeah, but it's just... The, the way it was done, I mean, there were a lot of people complaining. It's just like, oh, they ripped off Night's Old Republic. You haven't played that game, but it's still, yeah. like, my favorite game. And it's just like there's this scene where they have to lay down bombs to kill a crate dragon as it's coming out of its cave. Yet, they did that in this episode, but the dragon didn't die, and they have to actually go and actually fight the dragon. Mm-hmm. So it was actually pretty cool. It turned into kind of like a... You could feel the pacing of the the sh- episode change throughout. It was like a, a western in the beginning, yep. and then it turned. It if you anyone's ever seen Tremors, it felt like that movie, especially when the building starts to shake and Timothy Timothy, Ol- Timothy Oliphant's basically like, "I could use your help here," you know. And then they walk out and they see it crawling through the ground. Okay, so the battle with the uh, giant, um, the giant worm creature from SpongeBob. Uh, yeah, that that whole scene reminds me of um, Starship Troopers. With the whole the acid coming out the the mouth and all of that, it reminded me of that yep. scene in Starship Troopers when they're fighting the big bug. Yeah, but Starship Troopers, aliens. Let's move on and talk about the worst episode for me. I'm sure for okay. you too, which is the second episode. This is the most hated episode. I don't know why they had it. It makes do people do no other, sense. Do people uh, do other people actually like that episode, or they hate it also? Honestly, if anyone says they like it, they're kind of like the same people that say the sequel trilogies are epic. Yeah, because that episode... People, you, people's opinions who don't matter, was, they they don't was, care anyway. I honestly was expecting like a horror episode. Because, I mean, they have these big spiders. They're surrounded. I'm like, oh, okay, it's going to be awesome. The second the big spider comes out, they kill it. And that's it. I'm like, yeah. bro, this was such a waste of an episode. This is a waste of 30 minutes, bro. Well, because you, you, you get used to the fact that Mando's not going to stick with one kind of cinematic style. So it's not going to stick with a Western. Yeah, it's not exactly. going to stick with like a, a Tremors or a Monster Hunter kind of feel. No, it went strict. So I was thinking, okay, this is slow pacing. They're stranded on a planet. Maybe they're going to go the horror route. Mm-hmm. No, they show the spiders. There was no point to the entire episode. It was... Re- mm. it, it was... Mm. I, I don't know exactly. What, how, mm. <laughs> what are you doing? It was, mm. it was huh? It I'm, was, well, huh, I'm, huh, I'm trying Toby? to think of how... Toby? Toby Chong? <laughs> yeah. I was just trying to think of how bad it was. Because there was potential to do something there. Yeah. And the way it ended, the fact that these two X-Wing pilots are hunting Mando because apparently... Um, he's illegal or something. They just didn't want to... So I, I forgot forgotten pretty much all the episode and after they find out oh he's not a bad guy instead of leaving they decided to stop save him and tell him oh you're not a very bad guy and then leave that made no sense whatsoever it was like you guys would have left you guys would have left you wouldn't have stuck around what's the point of flying around for several more hours just to save him when you didn't even know he was in danger 
Yeah, I was listening. I was cleaning my glasses. These bad boys are so dirty. But absolutely, though. Um, yeah, the, but that's the thing. is like you go from uh, the first episode, which puts you on a high note, especially mm-hmm. when uh, you it ends on the final scene. You see someone watching Mando drive off on his speeder, and then you start getting hyped because it's all like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, I know I recognize this guy. I know I recognize yep, this guy. Yep. And then he turns around, and you see Boba Fett, and you know it's Boba Fett. He's going to be playing Boba Fett, and it's just like you get goosebumps. It, you it, expect something more. It went from a high because, like, like I said, the first one, look, my favorite episode. I'm sorry, my favorite episodes are one, six, seven, and eight. So you go from a high, and then you go to the second episode, like, huh? Okay. Yeah. Like what? So, like, that's the thing. If you if you skip, like, if they didn't have the second episode at all, because it really doesn't serve a purpose. I except it when it's I, a complete when, when I rewatched filler it, episode. I skipped that episode. Like, I didn't need it. Oh, and they wanted it's to, a complete filler. And they wanted to cancel. I'm calling him Baby Yoda. They wanted to cancel Baby Yoda because he kept eating um the eggs. I'm like, yep. oh my god, bro! So y'all, y'all crying too much. But <laughs> hey, th- those those eggs weren't even developed yet. Come on, exactly. <laughs> aren't, aren't, we should be. Hey, we should uh we should cancel ourselves because don't we eat eggs every morning. Yeah, yeah, eggs. <laughs> we eat eggs every morning. Heck, like, oh. heck I, I give eggs to my dog almost every single day. He loves them. Oh yeah, I egg. give him the shell and everything. Hey, it was so cute when he was like carrying an egg, so so soft and gentle. <laughs> and every time I try to grab yeah. it, he growls at me. But off topic. Um, yeah, yeah, that's. <laughs> hey, that's a better topic than the freaking episode in the second two. Second episode. Oh my god, yes. Bolt carrying an egg. Oh my god. Yeah, that, yeah, I would watch that for thirty minutes what'd and actually think, enjoy it. Have a good of, review. What do you think of um? What is her name? Is it Ahsoka Tano? Okay, Ahsoka Tano. I have never been a fan of Ahsoka Tano. I, 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 isn't she in um Clone Wars? I never watched it. Yeah, she's in Clone Wars. She's in Rebels. Yeah, she's I, she's been a character that I've never been a fan of. It felt like they added her just to fan service. Add her. Yeah, so it, I, it, I know when she showed fan up. Fan service. When she showed up, uh, automini- oh, I mean, automatically. I automatically knew um, kind of who she was. I've always seen pictures of her from Clone Wars. I just didn't know yeah. exactly her backstory and all that. And she's played by Rosario Dawson. That's all I know. But um, yeah. I don't know. But, like I thought I thought this episode was going to be awesome. You got a Jedi and all that. But another, there's another episode where I was just kind of like, eh. It, for me, it was just like the pacing of the fighting was the worst part. Oh, my God. Well, she, she, it was, Rosario it was Dawson. It, I, I don't know if it's, it was entirely her fault. She she seemed to be moving too slowly, and yep. honestly, the editing. If you if you know anything about editing, if you were to watch you, it, you seen my you videos. See, you know I'm, I know nothing about editing. You seen my YouTube. Yes, yeah. but it's just like if you, if you know anything about editing, it's just like you know that they didn't cut on the motion. They like started it as soon as she started to move. Got you. Yet if you watch the episode after the tragedy where it's basically uh baby Gr- baby yoda baby i was gonna say baby Groot. <laughs> yeah you're trying <laughs> to say grogu and baby yoda at the same time yeah it's just like it's just like okay yeah a baby yoda it's much much cuter to sound yeah. grogu's a terrible name yeah, yeah but it's just yeah. like you watch it afterwards mando yes mando has had training mando is more experienced or, i mean uh boba fett yeah. Like, uh, the actor has had more training. The actor is far more experienced. I mean, he grew up in kind of that tribal style. Mm-hmm. So he actually knows how to do the motions and put power behind his strikes. But the way it was edited, it was like the second it would do a, an edit, he was already in motion. So when it hit someone, it looked like it hit far harder Yeah. than when Ahsoka Tano struck someone and it seemed to go slow. It seemed like a slow strike throughout the entire thing yep. because she started from zero to, well, like five. Five was her max speed. Even the uh, <laughs> even the the fight scene, the the fight scene between her Ho and uh, Ho, between her and home girl. Oh my god! Between the two chicks at the end, let me just say that the two chicks, her and um home girl at the end. Man, I looked at that whole fight scene. It's like they take a hit, look at each other. Another hit, look at each other. Two, three, four, five, look at each other. I was like, bro. This fight yeah, is so the, boring. The, well, well, that's that's kind of a commonplace in Star Wars. I mean, even like Revenge of the Sith, Anakin and Obi Wan would stop and then talk for a long time, hey, but and then I fight mean, again. But that's different. But though, it, it, like, it, that's different. It, yeah, because because you they had building character, mm-hmm. they had a real relationship, and then it's just yeah, it's like we already was completely shattered. We were already dealing with um the fight scenes in this episode, and they were already kind of like slow, and then you get to the actual saber yeah. versus whatever thing she got and i'm just like okay maybe this should be it right here honestly bro i was focused i was more you know concerned about what was going on between mando and her henchmen because yeah because because yeah. that's the thing i mean even though they were just standing there because honestly they're as those two 
women were fighting. Mm-hmm. It was Mando, and then her uh, operative, yep. her her chief, whatever the right ladies. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. They were just standing, talking to each other, stepping mm-hmm. closer and closer and closer. Yeah. Get, it, as he re- got ready to reach for his weapon and everything, and it's just like you see so much more tension there, and there's so much. It's so much better there than, than seeing Ahsoka fight. Tano fight. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's why I was, was just like, I, I, I was excited to see, because I've never been a fan of Ahsoka Tano, but it's just like, okay, she's going to enter the live uh, uh, live action, kind of, we're going to see how she is. It's just like, mm-hmm. it's kind of what I expected. Yeah. I mean, I've never been a fan of her, so that also plays into the fact that I didn't like her there to begin with, because every single time they add someone new, it devalues Luke Skywalker's sacrifice. It devalues Luke Skywalker as a character. Mm-hmm. The, uh, was it, is it was the episode of the tragedy, the tower defense episode? Yes. That ep- oh, and, hey, we, we finally got back Boba Fett. This episode was awesome, dude. I mean, because really, oh, the all second it is, is he pro- put on his armor. Oh my god! All this this whole episode was basically protecting Baby Groot while he does something. So it's yeah, it's yeah. just a tower defense uh, episode. And man, Boba Fett, Boba Fett is badass outside of the uh, armor and inside. Yeah, and he, well, I love that he's he, out of shape too. <laughs> yeah, I, I I like I like how uh like when they were designing, it was just like you know what. We already have a gunslinger in this series, which is Mando, the kind of character I'd never really see using a gun. <laughs> He's normally just running around helping everyone else. Uh, but Hold up, uh, Boba Fett is supposed to be like the the barbarian. He's supposed to be like the one who does can do everything. And oh my gosh, you see it here. He like takes out so many people in a matter of seconds. And it was just like... It's amazing seeing a character that was so beloved that really never killed a single character hey. in all of Star Wars universe except in uh, the comics and the spin-off either, series. Hey, either that's a PS4 or I hear a vacuum. Let's just say it's a PS4. I think it's a... <laughs> yeah, that's a PS4. Yeah. But continue. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but it's just like he could fight and that's one thing i found fascinating is he killed more people here than he ever did in the original uh the ot series the uh, mm-hmm, the uh original empire yep. strikes back and then uh return of the jedi he killed more people here than he ever had before yep. which is more than one and it's fascinating because we instantly gobbled it up we knew he was a boss we knew he was a, an amazing character okay. and then we finally get to see him be an amazing character yeah um, what, what episode was after that? Because you had oh no, was this the episode with well? Um, that was the thing is with, uh, after Bill two, the yeah, because the, the thing is after two, like the terrible episode nobody liked. Then you had that episode where he's helping out the Mandalorians take a starship. Didn't care right? for that. I didn't care for that. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is like it, imagine if you were moved episode two and started watching episode three, mm-hmm. wouldn't you actually enjoy it a bit more? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I did because it, but I, I, wasn't I was a big fan of it, but it was. Yeah, I, I was I was hated. Episode. Well, well, because just like every other episode, it served no purpose. Uh-huh. Even when they're raiding the ship, he's in the background, not shooting anyone. Exactly, he serves absolutely no purpose. That's why I was just saying, like it's I, a I mentioned. Episode. Yeah, that, and I also mentioned it in my review. Is there's this one scene where, and apparently people don't know anything about tactics who are shooting these episodes. Yeah, the the stormtroopers are stuck in a doorway. They're literally stuck in a doorway. And here, Mando and all the other Mandalorians have a giant hallway to hide in. So they have they have the open space. Yeah. However, it all they have to do is concentrate all their fire into that doorway and they'd kill all the, the stormtroopers. It, 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 they had the better positioning. Now, if it was reversed, it would make sense that Mando would need to pull out the bombs and actually do something important. No, mm-hmm. it seemed like they weren't actually thinking things through. They seemed to do this over and over again, just like in the part where um, in the final episode where it's the girl gang, the Mandalorians, Gina Carano and uh, Fer- Ferric, Ferric, I think her name is. Yeah, Fennec? yeah, yeah, yeah. Fennec. Yeah. That was uh, where, episode eight, right? Yeah, yeah, where they're all fighting together, where one of the tr- uh, ultimately trained Mandalorians is pointing her gun at the back of the other female characters. It was just like... Anyone who knows how to handle a weapon knows that that would never fly. They need someone on set who can tell them. Just like when Gina Carano is trying to clean her weapon mm-hmm. out because it jammed. Yeah. When she's slamming it on the ground, the uh, the barrel of the gun is actually pointed at one of the other characters. It, it's it's That's like, so come bad. on. Yeah. It's not hard to catch. Here, I saw it through the first time, and I instantly caught all those things. Yeah, that's, that's bad. 
it, it's something I'm well aware of. It's something you need to know. It's just, it's just like, come on, this is this isn't that hard to do. Just have someone on set who knows about gun safety regulations mm-hmm. and can tell you this is not how you handle a firearm. This is a very dumb thing to do. All right. Heck, most of gun violence happen on fire ranges to begin with. <laughs> All right. People not knowing how to handle them. Episode but nine. Yeah, it, Episode it was nine. things like that. You already see it was things to, like that. You're about to talk for like 20 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, one yeah. It was, it was things like that, but all right. Uh, it, I love it episode was, nine. It's, Bill Burr, Bill yeah. Burr came, and you know what's funny? I love no, when, um, it, not episode nine. That, that was, was episode seven. Seven. Oh, because yeah. then okay, because episode there's seven. eight episodes. Oh, because uh oh, there's eight episodes. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's the there's the first one, which was basically killing the uh, the killing just, the dragon. Timothy I just, got done, wa- I just got done watching Cobra Kai, so I, I, I forgot now shows are either eight or ten episodes. Yeah, ep, 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 uh, episode two was the one nobody likes. Mm-hmm. Episode three was with the Mandalorians. Episode four was with Ahsoka Tano. Right? I, I thought that was five. Okay, episode five. What was episode four? What happened in between? I don't know. I told you, my episodes only care about six, seven, and eight. Yeah, yeah there's Ahsoka Tano, and then there was the tragedy. It was so, it was and seven. then, yeah, then there was the Bill Burr. Now, honestly, Bill Burr was amazing. You know what I love? When, when movies and shows do this, they take somebody, they take a comedian and make them to be a, and a total, a, the total opposite of what they normally are. Bill Burr here was great because, like you said, um, was it he was a dick in the first season? And this one, yeah. you know, what, what this episode wasn't called The Tragedy, was it? No, this one was something else. It would have made sense because he's still haunted by a tragedy, by losing his men, by losing all these innocent people. So you're thinking like, okay, he's just a dick. He's going, he's just out for him. But then, um, what was it? The scene where they have to infiltrate the uh, the base, and uh, Mando has to take off his helmet or whatever. Oh, that was episode four. That was ep- no, that episode ca- four. That was not. No, episode no, no, four. no, 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 no. What you saying? The inf- infiltrating the base. Remember that in episode four, he went back to visit Gina Carano and Carl Weathers, and they took out a, a a stormtrooper base. They blew it up. Okay. That was episode four, and then he went to find because his ship was destroyed, and needed repaired, and then he went to find Ahsoka Tano. I'm still googling it. Please be wrong. Please be wrong. You said episode four. Yeah. With Gina Carano and Carl Weathers. And the, the, the blue, the blue I forgot his race, the blue guy came back. He's like the, he runs the computers there. They kept, they made him a running joke. He was like the C-3PO of that episode. You know what's messed up? I'm sitting there on Wikipedia in this, on, on Wikipedia <laughs> because, you know, it's like a C. I don't know none of the characters' names. No, you're wrong. Uh, it is Cara episode Dune. seven. It's episode seven, The Believer. No, I'm talking about four. I was talking about seven. Carl Bill Weathers. Burr. No, you no, you brought up the the the. That's why I said Gina Carano. That's why I said Carl Weathers. I'm, Carl Weathers wasn't in episode seven. I'm not talking about that. They have to still infiltrate something to get. The, yes, I know, but a lot of these episodes do repeat a lot of the same same bullet points. Yeah, okay, that's definitely. and how many one times thing are I didn't they not, like though are they infiltrating something that is true. One one of the thing I didn't like though is that they finally got Boba Fett. And they turned him into the getaway driver. Yeah. All he does is shuttle them. He ferries them from location to location to location. He That's does. it. He does. He has that awesome fighting scene in the tragedy. And then from then on, he's nothing but a shuttle driver. Yeah, he didn't do much after that. Yeah. <laughs> but he's getting yeah. his own show. Yes. Yeah, that was epic for him to get his Excuse own me. show. Okay, back to what but, I was saying. Yeah. When they have to infiltrate, you know what I'm saying, another another place... And they get caught by the commander, so they have to sit down because he used to, um, Bill Burr's character used to be, you know, part of the Empire or whatever. So he's sitting there, and I'm thinking, like, okay, he's going to just talk his way out of it. And then all of a sudden, he himself brings up that moment where they had to, you know, kill his men, you know, kill these innocent people. And the look on his face and um, Pedro Pascal's face, because pa- um, Pedro Mando is looking like, oh, crap. This is this is bad. I already know what's about to happen. Yeah, he, he kinda, could tell something. And you could see he, he was bringing up garbage. Mm-hmm. He was bringing up like the past. It was just like this yeah. is this is not going to end well. And you could see he, the emotion he, he of Bill Burr's face is kind of like you you could see the the emotion like the sadness the the rage in his face and then finally he just let it he just let it goes off like I thought that was a great scene um, action wise uh, story wise acting wise. I would love to see more Bill Burr's character because I thought he was great in that scene and in the episode as a whole. 
Well, that's the thing is like in the first the first time they showed him in season one, I did not care for him one bit. No, he was I just didn't. the arrogant jerk. The one the, the only joke he did was just like I wasn't a stormtrooper because he was talking about how he was a sharpshooper mm-hmm. in the Empire, and it's just like. It, it, you don't care for him, but they bring him back. In the second they introduce him on the the junk planet where he's taking apart uh, spaceships and everything, you instantly get a feel for his character. As soon as he's told he needs to report, he's wary. Yeah. He thinks either someone paid off someone to get him taken care of or something bad's about to happen. And especially when he's like brought uh, Gina Carano brings him over to the uh, Boba Fett, and he's like, "Oh, I thought you were somebody else." And then Mando comes walking down the oh, rampart. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. like, "Oh my gosh, this is because he, he's hilarious. His he 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 can act because it would change from him just uh, smiling kind of uncomfortably to yeah. him being like relaxed to instantly being tensed in that short scene." I mean, I enjoyed him in Breaking Bad. <laughs> yeah, he he, he does. Uh, he was a great character, and I want him to come back. Honestly, Absolutely. he should get a he spinoff. Has to. He has to. Because apparently he hates the Empire and <laughs> is willing to blow up an entire mm-hmm. base. Because mm-hmm. that's what's one thing I found funny. is like here he's killing off this officer who apparently killed all his friends just because they they needed to win that battle. And he ends up blowing in, up an entire base with other officers yeah. that are literally just following orders like his friends. So it's kind of like that circle of <laughs> no matter what, you're always a bad guy. No matter what, you do what you have to do. And I love the con- that op- that officer thought he was right. And here, Bill Burr's character thinks he's right, yep. even though he's doing the exact same thing his officer did. But he really did. the thing yeah. is, he doesn't know those characters on that base. He doesn't know who they are. So he doesn't care. There's no emotional attachment, just like with his commanding officer. That is true. There was no that's emotional a, attachment. That's a good way to look at it. And... Um, I love the conversation he has um, when they're in the the transport uh, truck or whatever, and he was sitting there saying, "Cause like remember, you know, Mando can't take his helmet off or can't show his face or whatever. But in order to infiltrate, he has to switch into I don't know if it's a stormtrooper suit. It probably is or a different color or whatever. But he has to get into this whole new getup. And so when he's talking to him, he's like, "Yo, so you know, what's the deal? Like, is it you can't take off your helmet or you can't show your face?" It's like. You know, me and you are just alike. Like when you, we follow our rules until things get messy. Which, if you think yeah, about you, it, Mando has you been you bend following. your rules. Mm-hmm. Mando you has bend been your following rules his code, depending on the situation. He's been following his code, but then again, when things get messy, you see him taking off the helmet. You see him, you know, wearing a whole different outfit. So it's like, yeah, he again, he's just like Bill Burr in a way. It's like when things get messy, he has to bend or break his rules. Yeah, to do what he needs to do. Mm-hmm. But remember, Bill Burr never saw his face. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's just like don't worry man i won't tell anyone just like what yeah. what well, it <laughs> it's not how it works the next episode and the that's next not episode, how it every, works everybody saw his face in the next episode yeah but, but that's um, the thing i mean it, it was i love bill bird's character and i hope they bring him back they have to in they 2022 to. when they finally decide to continue it again yeah because you because you know it's not coming out this year i mean they have uh, Book nope of Fett and they're show. gonna they're gonna be working on every other show yep. other than the Mandalorian, which finally has started to get somewhere. Because, honestly, episode... The way the season ended was amazing. This better you, not be hurt well, me. Ugh. One of the problems is the Dark Troopers. A lot of people have an issue with how. why did it take these advanced robots punching a door for like five minutes oh, yes. only for yes. Luke. But the thing is, it was all the build up for tension to show one X-Wing flying in and then Gina Carano's character, say, Cara Dune, saying, oh, uh, so one X-Wing... Uh, that's gonna save us and it's just like as soon as you know it's one x-wing it's like there's only one person in the galaxy who flies around it's, in one x-wing it's funny so when this happened okay we're in the we're in the last episode now when that happened um i was on facebook or google or whatever <clears throat> no it was google because i hate how google always the second a show comes out they always pop up with this is any website they always pop up with articles it's not spoilers but it's really a spoiler but um this is yeah. about mace windu and i'm like so that's Mace Windu, but I'm just sitting there looking. Even though I'm not a big Star Wars fan, I only mess with the, the OT. I was like, wait a minute, Mace had a purple. The only person I remember that had a green was Luke um, Luke Skywalker. Y'all not telling me this is Skywalker. And bro, Skywalker was going through them like crazy. The thing is, the second it got to showing his face, oh my god, that CGI was horrible. But, 
But that was amazing because honestly, I did love how it was done. I mean, people are making jokes about how you see uh, Luke Skywalker, how Luke Skywalker sees you because he had his hood up the entire time. Oh, yeah, I love but that. But it's one. just like I love that. Meme. I, 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 I still find it amazing because he's using the Force. Exactly. I remember, he was he, in 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 A New Hope, which is now called A New Hope, oh, Star Wars. With the uh, it's the, 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 the yeah, where he's fighting the yeah, where he's basically got the blast shield down mm -hmm. and he's fighting the training droid. Yep. He he's using the force to sense out, and he can obviously sense where a machine is. The training droid is a machine, mm -hmm. and here he is battling all these uh, dark troopers. Like he's walking through uh, droids in uh, the original or the prequel series. Yeah, the easy droids. He's just walking through them, and you can see the power of a Jedi through this scene because you saw Mando struggling with just a single, single. Dark Trooper. Yo, he was getting Just that work one. in. <laughs> that that yeah. trooper was getting that work in. That that fight was seemed like it was stressful for him. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you have Luke Skywalker show up, and he's destroying every single one without sweating, without even bothering. But what I found that so amazing was here we have Luke Skywalker, like the most loved Jedi, the Jedi who believes in hope above anything else, yeah. who fought against Darth Vader and the Emperor. Here he is walking through these droids, which are so easy for him, yet his father was very difficult to fight. So you got you get to see how powerful Darth Vader truly is through this scene, because he's walking through some a character that Mando could barely even defeat Wait a one minute. of. Darth Vader, he's walking Darth through Vader, Darth Vader. What these are built after Darth Vader or something? No, no, dark troopers have always been around. But what I'm saying is, oh, you Luke said Skywalker. Darth Vader. That's what I was like. What? Yeah, Luke Skywalker fought Darth Vader, right? Yep. Fighting his father, mm -hmm. and then it was hard for Luke Skywalker to fight his father. Yeah. It was a struggle. It was a a, a real equal fighting there, and then here he's walking through these dark troopers as if they oh, were nothing. Okay, no, I Yet the saying, dark yeah. trooper. It's like the comparison here. The dark trooper was a massive struggle for even Mando. Yeah. So it lets you see exactly how powerful Jedi are, exactly how par powerful Darth Vader was. Yeah. And it, I, I love the correlation because you, you, a lot of people would complain about how the fighting scenes were so weak. But the fighting style Luke Skywalker uses is – I've always found it's fascinating. Homie it's like strong, uh, very strong. Like... Yeah. It's very strong yeah. swings, very, very powerful. And you could tell – even before he turned on his lightsaber, who he was, just by the X-Wing. Oh, you could oh. tell the second he turned on his lightsaber, who he was. You could tell by his fighting, who he was. Mm -hmm. You could tell by his glove, who he was. Yeah. There were so many little uh, glimpses of, this is who it is, this is who it is, this is who it is. If you don't know yet, we're going to show you. If you don't know yet, you're gonna, we're going to show you. So the thing is, for people like me, who are diehard fans, we're already in love with it. Yeah. Before he even took off his hood, and it was just like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, bro! I'm, I was, okay, again, I have my glasses off, so I'm like, okay, it sucks, but maybe it's not bad. I watched it again, brand new glasses. It got worse. <laughs> like, no. yeah, it's 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 not great, but I give it a pass because it's a TV show. Yeah, I give them that too. Even though, but this is Disney; they got the money to do that. Yeah, they they really do. They, Honestly, they should just develop software if they plan on doing this more and more. Mm -hmm. That where all it does is do that. Well, I mean, heck, some some uh snapchats and things like that have better face filters yeah but i love the goodbye between um baby yoda and uh mando i thought that was good i mean man that was even I was amazingly about to, even I was done about to especially when he had to take off he took off his helmet you know so, so he can look him eye to eye and i was like Bruh. oh i gotta say uh there's a the actor that they have playing moff gideon you know the oh, gus, gus. Uh, my boy um whatever his name is yeah Carter, yeah 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 he 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 is amazing. Honestly, one thing I found truly great about uh, the scene hey, when I, I uh, feel, Luke Skywalker hey, is taking out so everyone. I feel so disrespectful not saying his full name. It's like uh, I forgot how to pronounce his name, but I feel so disrespectful. So if you ever watch this, I apologize. But you're Gus to me. Have a have a good <laughs> day. Thanks for cutting me off for that. Yep. You could have said that afterwards. Nope. Uh, but one thing I got to say is he was amazing in the role. Oh, absolutely. Because the second, the second Gina Carano or Cara Dune's character or Gina Carano's character, Cara Dune says, oh, uh, one X-Wing. They oh. cut to Moff Gideon and he has this look it, of not completely scared, but more bewilderment or puzzled. Because he goes from and like then a smirk, all of, like oh, one X-Wing and then they, he really looks at it and it's like, oh, no. 
Yeah, he, he, you could tell through the his face, and that's what I found actually better. Here, Gina Carano was. She worked in the Republic. She fought alongside, well, where Luke Skywalker fought, mm-hmm. where Leia Organa fought, Luke, the the where Leia Organa fought yeah. as a general, and it's just like she doesn't know who Luke Skywalker is, which is fascinating because it lets you see that Luke Skywalker truly kept to himself. He didn't want the glory and praise that was given to him. Mm-hmm. That here, Gina Carano doesn't know who he is entirely. Yeah. Yet Moff Gideon, a remnant of the Empire, the second he hears one X-Wing, has an inkling that he knows who is in that ship. Instantly is terrified when he starts hearing that all his droids are being destroyed because he knows the only person capable of doing that. He the His face goes from sheer joy to sheer fear even when in a see, matter of moments even when you see like luke is like really just going through those machines his face he just gets more he, he gets even more horrified because yeah he know he's in trouble so when he when he starts like he grabs the gun and starts shooting everybody and then he's getting ready to kill himself boy you yeah you know skywalker is a big deal yeah because because that that really did help cement the fact that luke skywalker is a good kind-hearted person even though his own Republic doesn't really know who he is. Mm-hmm. However, the Empire fears him, which is it's kind of like the, the uh, John Wick. Nobody knows who he is in real life, oh, yeah. but anyone who's in that, that line of work is knows who Baba Yaga is, yep. knows who the boogeyman is. So it, I, I love that. It's just like everyone in the Empire, okay. that's their boogeyman. Okay, hold on. Okay, cool. this is just for that boogeyman John Wick comment. Is he the boogeyman or is he the person you send to kill the boogeyman? Because Baba Yaga he, is the boogeyman, but he says yeah, he, they say he's the one you send to kill the boogeyman. He is the boogeyman. So he's a boogeyman that they send to kill the other boogeyman. Yeah. Okay. Because every time I hear that, I was just like, bro, like, but he's the person you send to kill the boogeyman. So is he just a boogeyman slayer? You know, the Baba Yaga slayer. Yeah, he's the bog. I guess he's the Baba Yaga of Baba Yagas. Yeah. Okay. The Baba. Okay. I got it. I got it. I mean, every monster yeah. has a monster that they're scared of. So. Yeah. There's the to quote Star Wars. There's always a bigger fish. It is. So <laughs> yeah. Okay. But um, back but to this. It, yeah. Hey, I got us back on topic. I quoted Star Wars. You actually but did. It, yeah, the the. I loved it just because of Luke Skywalker being introduced, and I do got to say that I did really enjoy Mando versus. Gus. Let's let's oh, just say Gus. That fight was actually <laughs> uh, yeah. that fight. Gus Gideon. <laughs> yeah, Gus Gideon. Mo, uh, Mo, oh, that's actually know, not Mo, bad. Moss Green. Moss Green. Nah, nah. Gus Gideon sounds better. Honestly, I'm gonna put that in the description. <laughs> Moss Mo Green. No, yeah, Gus Gideon. I like actually, yeah, I like that. Gus Gideon. Because <laughs> because that was an amazing fight, and I, I love how it basically started out where he was basically talking to Mando. Oh, it's just like yes. I'll give you the baby, y'all let you go, and then all of a sudden he just turns around and tries to strike him, and it okay. leads into this entire fight. I'm not gonna lie, when I was watching that scene, I was just like, okay, I'm enjoying this scene, but I know for a fact, Gus. <laughs> Call yeah, Gus. he is not that gonna Gus. let this happen. Absolutely he's not. gonna pull something. So when he did that, I, I can't believe I did this. I was just in there watching. I'm like, he's gonna turn on him. The second he pull um, pull out the saber, I was like, ah! I was like, did I really just make that noise, bro? <laughs> really? <laughs> I was that invested in that in this episode in that scene in Mando. I was like, bro, I really just let out that gasp. But yes, bro, he yeah, that, that fight that fight was better than um all the fights Ahsoka Tana did in that one episode. Yes. They they really did pile on everything here, and mm-hmm. honestly, oh, I it, loved yeah. how as soon as as soon as um, Mando won the saber, Ooh. Moff Gideon was finding it humorous yep. that the fact that he was not going to kill him, he was like, "Oh, this is going to be interesting," because he knew that Bo Katan, you know, the the mm-hmm. redhead yeah. uh, Mandalorian, yep. she she was the original wielder, well, of the dark saber. How, however. Apparently now the dark saber is supposed to be earned in combat. Mm-hmm. Yet even uh, this is going into like Clone Wars you haven't seen, but mm-hmm. Bo Katana was handed the dark saber. She didn't earn it. Okay. She never earned it. So that's something I find funny is here she was about to get it the exact same way she earned it in the first time, but it seemed kind of strange. It was just like you accepted it the first time it was handed to you. Why aren't you going to accept it this time? Yeah. However, one thing I loved was they introduced Luke Skywalker. Moff Gideon has been captured, and you know he's going to find a way to escape because he's just amazing. And here you have the final shot basically being um, Mand- Mando wielding the Darksaber in front of a few other Mandalorians, Gina Carano, with a prisoner Moff Gideon. It, it, you, 
you get this feeling that he is going to become the leader of the Mandalorians. Mm-hmm. He yep. is the wielder of the Darksaber. He is the one who has earned it in combat. He is the rightful owner until someone else can beat him. Yeah. So it, it's like I, I'm hoping they go that route. I really want to see him bring the Mandalorians back to their old prime. To where they were conquerors. They would they would thrill for battle. That is what I would like to see. However, we won't see that for probably another two years. <laughs> <laughs> At this rate. Because I hated that. Now, if they did this all these spinoffs after the first season, mm-hmm. I wouldn't care that they'd wait for a whole year or two or three mm-hmm. to make season two of The Mandalorian. Yeah. Because the first season was just... I didn't care. The only cool character I thought was Moff Gideon. Who appeared at the very end. Yeah, yeah. And they introduced him with the Darksaber. And I thought that was pretty awesome. However, now, the way they ended it here, they've introduced so many characters. They've introduced so many, uh, well, subplots. And it's just like, I want to see him become Mando. Yeah. Give me that. Give me that. Don't make me wait two years. A year is already long enough. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, But, uh... Yeah, Mando season two though it actually was enjoyable. Take out that ep- um, second episode and you're oh, good. Sheesh, that second episode. Yeah, it's it's really the best so far. It's honestly one of the best uh, shows I've seen in a while. Of course, I don't see that much new TV until you but... watch Cobra Kai. Yeah, <laughs> until then, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, it's definitely worth a see. I mean, this Absolutely. was filled with spoilers, which makes it great. I, I always enjoy a good spoiler. I'm, I'm one who've never understood what spoilers really were. Everyone finds something else to be a spoiler. Yeah, I don't, but I don't it's want definitely to, worth you know, a watch. I don't want it, you spoiling it's, the show. I've been trying to, you know, I've been watching for years. It's like, you know, you get to the last episode. Oh yeah, Omar died. What you mean, Omar died? I'm not going well, to tell imagine, you what show that was. Imagine it this way, though: if if someone spoiled Game of Thrones for you, would you really? I don't care would to, you invest I don't care that time? To, well, exactly. I, I spoiled exactly. it for myself. Actually, it got, the second I heard Sean Bean died, which I was going to watch it for, the second he told me he died, I was like, oh, there's no point in watching it. But yeah, yeah. there's a but lot, that, there's that, a lot of shows the that I've seen and um, spoiled it for myself. For example, uh, I spoiled The Wire uh, for myself. And I spoiled uh, Dexter. I still watched it and enjoyed it. But it's, yeah, it's because I didn't, care, it... I didn't care for it at first. But if it showed that I really want to keep watching, example, Mandalorian, Cobra Kai, if I'm watching that, then don't spoil it for me because I'm invested in this. Yeah, well, to me, spoilers have never made any sense because no matter what, if I'm invested in something, I'm going to watch it. That's because you're a psychopath. Because I can rewatch the same thing over and over and over again and still find it as impactful oh. and great as I did the first time. Absolutely. RP The Office. Yeah. Because nobody's going to watch it on Peacock. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh, all right. Let's wrap this I, I up. Think, I, yeah, we're, we're going off into other zones now. Yeah, yeah it's, um, it's been a long video. Thank you all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Mm-hmm. Go follow Big Daddy Mo over on his channel. Yes, his Big Daddy uh, Mo. The subscribe, subscribe button will be up there in the corner of the entire video just so you can click on it by accident and find his page. By accident. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Doodles. Peace.